Hello, everyone. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday. Welcome to this week's episode. So today, what I'm going to talk about is using a little handheld recorder, in this case a Zoom H5, to record on location with my lever harp by putting this inside the body of the harp, which is a great way to cut down on any extra wind noise or extraneous noise, and also uh, sounds quite good. So I could demonstrate that here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out on location and show that to you. And then I'm going to show you how easy it is to automatically sync that audio with video using a free program called DaVinci Resolve. But before I do that, I thought I would just talk very briefly about this particular recorder, this Zoom H5, some of the features that it offers, and which might give you some ideas if you're shopping for a handheld recorder. So both Zoom and Tascam, for example, make excellent handheld recorders. Which one's best, what, what you should get, I don't know, but um, I'll just tell you, as I say, a couple features of this, which is the H5. I got this originally because when I was touring, I wanted something that would could record concerts with a better audio quality than the onboard uh, microphone on my camera and and was as portable and lightweight as possible. And so this, I, you know, this is a great little form factor. It was, does what it does really well, and there you are. It's got a stereo microphone at the top, which is great, and that's kind of what you want in this for music. You know, you want to have the left and right two separate channels with a, a stereo effect. It's just, it's, it's, it'll tend to sound better. Um, this one has a modular sort of microphone effect where you can take these microphone off and put other Zoom microphones on top. I've never used that. I don't own any other Zoom modular microphones. I don't know that it's a particularly useful feature, but all else being equal, it's nice that it's there. Um, but I think the, the main thing that kind of sets this apart from some of the maybe like the, the cheaper Zoom models, and this is not super expensive, I think it's under $300 now new, um, but it offers these two additional inputs on the, on the bottom. And so these are both XLR and uh, sort of line input or instrument input um, connections. So most, uh, most sort of professional quality microphones are connected via XLR cables. So this will allow you to then plug in an, a, a microphone or, or two separate microphones and record, in addition to recording on the, uh, the built-in stereo microphone. So you can get up to eight, sorry, you can get up to four channels, the, the left right here and these two channels. So that's really useful, and as I say, it also offers a line input, so or instrument cable. So, for example, with my little electric harp, it has this type of connection, which uh, which I can then again plug directly into here and record, and that's been super handy. So I don't need a separate recorder for that. That's all, again, just sort of this all-in-one all type of thing. This can also function as a USB audio interface. So you can plug it into your computer via USB-A cable, and it will then act as, for example, a microphone. You could use it for Zoom calls. You could plug your electric harp into it and run that harp then through the computer. It's not, of course, as good quality as a purpose-built audio interface, um, but it's, it's okay, right? And that's potentially useful. So yeah, there you have it. Now, I also want to talk just briefly about levels because of course, by putting it inside the body of the harp, it's gonna be quite loud in there. And what you want to make sure is that you don't get distortion, you don't get peaking. So at a certain point, if the sound levels are registering too high, so above zero dB on, on the sound recorder, they will peak, they will go above that, and anything above that, the recorder will lose that information. It can't, that information is gone and it sounds terrible. And there's no recovering from that. You can't really do anything about it. So I've definitely had recordings where it's, they're just not usable because I inadvertently set the levels too high. So on this, um, let's see if we can focus over here. Yes, this will set the levels of these little stereo mics, zero to 10. What I found by trial and error is 
2, 2.1, a little bit of under 2, that's fairly safe. That's, pretty, that's quite safe. Um, and, and it might be different for you depending on your harp and the piece you're playing and how loud you're playing. But again, the thing is you can always boost the uh, sound levels in post. You can't do anything about distortion, so always better to aim a little bit low. One thing that is kind of interesting is that now they are, there are recorders that are starting to use 32-bit float. Uh, nothing in this form factor that I'm aware of, but a larger zoom and also, for example, some little lav uh, recorders, um, lavalier recorders, that the 32-bit float means essentially there's no levels and it just records everything. So you can't, you don't have peaking. You can, it's got unlimited dynamic range in that sense. So that, if, if there is a little handheld recorder in, with that at, um, feature at some point in the future, that would be, I, I think that's just fantastic because it just guarantees that you're not going to mess up and get uh, distortion. Okay, so let's go out in the field and uh, give this a whirl. So as I said, I thought, what better way than to actually show you here outdoors what I'm talking about in terms of recording with my Zoom and putting it inside the body of my harp. So here I've got my Zoom H5. And I'm going to turn it on and make sure that this is set somewhere below 2. Just to be on the safe side. It's ready to go. I will press record making sure that left and right is selected, that we're getting some numbers there, some activity. Then I like to press the hold button just to lock it in place so in case something gets, gets touched, it won't actually affect anything, right? So if I press this again, it won't stop recording because the hold button is on. And then I'll put it inside the body of the harp, right down here. And settle it in there. So I don't know if it's the this is the best option, but I try to kind of you can see that the microphone part is resting there on its own in the sort of the, the hollow and everything is being supported the zoom itself is kind of sticky rubbery enough that if i gently try and put some pressure on this to move it it won't move so it's it's fairly fairly solidly in place now i have had times when i've maybe been moving the harp or something that you get some noise or distortion and maybe playing the low A loudly if it's not maybe in the right spot or solidly in the right spot you might get some unwanted sound but on the whole this has been a great option and so there you have it now we're ready to record and when I get back home I'll show you how easy it is then to sync up the audio then from the zoom to the video recording. All right, so I'm at the computer now. I'm, I've loaded in those files under my hard drive, renamed them so that I, they're easy to find and organize, and I've launched DaVinci Resolve. So this is a, a fantastic video editing program and it's available for free. I'm using the paid version, which is a one-time fee, but the free version, I would say, has 98% of the functionality you'd ever want. And yeah, it's free. Go download it. It's fantastic. Um, and it will do what I'm going to show you. So here, I'm in the media tab right now, which is this area down here. You know, we got the media, we got the edit tab, etc. And I'm going to drag in from my other monitor, so you, you won't be able to see that. But anyway, um, I'm going to drag in the video of Skyboat Song that I did while I was out there. I thought I might as well record something. Skyboat Song seemed appropriate out there by the water. Um, so not the most amazing recording, but good enough. We'll bring that in. And here's the audio then from our Zoom, from the Zoom. And I'm also going to drag in one of the talking to camera videos from location. And 
I recorded audio also on a lavalier mic while I was out there. Okay, so there they are. So now we could go to our timeline, Dragon, Skyboat Song, make this bigger so we can actually see the waveform and actually I'll slide this up a little bit and then bring in our zoom recording, make this larger so we can see that and then try to manually ourselves sync this up, right? There's the beginning, zoom way in on the timeline and try and sync that up, play it back, see if that sounds okay and then we would just replace, like we can drag this there, there, and we can replace that audio, and now it should be in sync. Um, cool. Actually, I don't think I dragged that quite correctly, but anyway, um, but a little bit fiddly and a little bit annoying. So it's, it's certainly possible, but there's an easier way that's really, I've really enjoyed, and it has made my workflow so much easier. So if we select both of those clips, we can just right click on them, auto sync audio based on a waveform. That was fast because they're fairly short files. Now, if we drag Skyboat Song in, we will see this little sort of link icon and the little dot. Both of those show that it's using a linked audio file and not the, in this case, onboard camera audio. One last little thing, we might be able to make this louder. We can go to normalize audio, normalize audio levels, which will basically look for in this case zero dB, loudest we can be without peaking, and raise everything up on an equal and appropriate amount so that the loudest point is at zero. You can see that's 8.5, so we had room on our settings, we were a little bit beneath two. We could have cranked up the settings on the audio recorder a little bit higher, but better safe than sorry. So there we are, and that should all be in sync. And there you go. Now we can do the same with this talking to camera and the lavalier mic. Now you might notice it's a little hard to select just those two. Like how do we select just those two? Just select one, hold down control on a, on a PC, I think command probably on a Mac. S select the other one, there we go. Again, we can right click and we can select auto sync audio. Cool. Now there's one other option. Let's maybe undo that. I don't know if that will actually work. Let's see, talking to camera. Yeah. Okay, so I guess it's not the link icon, it's the little dot icon that shows that it's it's a, a linked file. So, uh, my bad. Okay, so here we have this. Let's say instead that we brought this down here. There's one other way we could sync these up, and that's to select those files and making sure that this is, that the audio files are not on the same track, but on different tracks. Select those, right click and say, auto align clips based on waveform. And again, it will, with its magic, search for matching waveforms and auto-align these. So this is particularly useful if you've got two uh, takes from two different cameras of the same, the same playthrough, for example. So that way you can make sure they're both aligned in the same moment and you can cut back and forth between those two camera angles and that can be really handy. Uh, but in general, I will just use this option here, right? This and this and, uh, oops, sorry, gotta select them both this and this and auto sync audio based on waveform. So as I say, just a fantastic uh, way to speed up your workflow and uh, works really, really well. So I hope that's been useful and that you've enjoyed that. I'll see you in two weeks for another episode of Harp Tuesday.